In this video, we're going to explore recurrence relations. A recurrence relation is just another way to express how to find the next values in a sequence. And a recurrence relation has two parts. And the first part is an equation. And so that equation is going to tell us how to get to the next term in the sequence. And it expresses A of N in terms of one or more of the previous terms. So like we said before, you need the term before it or sometimes two terms before it or three terms before it in order to find the next term. So because it's an equation that relies on previous terms, the second part of a recurrence relation is the initial conditions. And the initial conditions could be one previous value, some starting point like A, like we had for our arithmetic or geometric sequences, or it could be that they've also given us A sub 1, which would be the next term in the sequence, and however many initial conditions you have will be based on your equation. So let's take a look at this example so you can see what I'm talking about. So for my example, I have an equation and I have initial conditions. And it also tells me the equation only works for n is greater than or equal to 2, and that's because over here I've given you a sub 0 and a sub 1. So they're saying this function starts at a sub 2. So that's what my recurrence relation is. So that's all of the parts of my recurrence relation. Here's how it works. In this case, we're looking at a recurrence relation to find whichever term I want, I have to take the term before it, n minus 1, a sub n minus 1, and 2 times the term before that. So that's why I have two initial conditions, because my next term is based on the values of the two terms before it. So we already know a sub 0 is 2. So again, if I wanted to write this in a sequence, the first term is 2, the next term is 5, and if they said, hey, find some more, well then I have to do some math. So to find a sub 2, then I would take a sub 1 plus 2 times a sub 0 according to this equation. So a sub 2 is a sub 1, or 5, plus 2 times a sub 0, which is 2, so 5 plus 2 times 2 is 4 gives me 9. So that means my next term would be 9. a sub 3. a sub 3, again, according to this equation, says take a sub 2 plus 2 times a sub 1. So a sub 2 I just found. That was 9. 2 times a sub 1 would be 2 times 5. So 9 plus 10, which is 19. We can see that we could keep continuing this. So a sub 4 would be a sub 3 plus 2 times a sub 2. And that would be a sub 3 is 19. 2 times a sub 2, which was 9, which gives me 19 plus 18 which gives me 37. And I'm not going to keep going because obviously, oops, we can see exactly how to find each additional term in the sequence. But the important thing here is that if you have a recurrence relation, you need all of the parts listed here. So you need this equation, and then you're going to have this that says, when does that equation start? And then you're going to have your initial conditions. Let's take a look at a practice question. Actually, two parts of a practice question, but they both deal with the same recurrence relation, where to find the next term in the sequence, I just take the previous term and I add 6. And that is for n greater than or equal to 1, which means, of course, that they're going to give me a sub 0. And then I'm going to need to find the rest of them. So looking at this, we're saying to find, we have a sub 0, to find a sub 1, a sub 2, a sub 3, that's what we're asked to find. To find a sub 1, I'm going to take a sub 0 plus 6. To find a sub 2, I take a sub 1 plus 6. To find a sub 3, I take a sub 2 plus 6. 
So a1 is a0, which is 3, plus 6, which is 9. a2 is a1, which is 9, plus 6, which is 15. And a3 is a2, which is 15, plus 6, which is 21. Now, this is, as you probably recognize, because we talked about arithmetic and geometric sequences, this is just an arithmetic sequence. All I'm doing is just adding 6 to get from one term to the next. So I'm getting ahead of myself. But this, if you'll recall, could be written as an arithmetic sequence, where arithmetic sequence was a plus d n. So in this case, I could write a sub n as a, which is 3, plus my common difference of 6, n. Now again, this is not necessary for this question. The reason that I bring it up is because recurrence relations are fine, but what if I said find a100? Well, then to find a100, I would need all of the values before it because it's always based on the value before it. So if I don't want to find a4 through a99 in order to find a100, I, if I can write it in a closed equation like this, explicit form as we talked about before, then it's pretty easy for me to say, well, a100 is 3 plus 6 times 100, which would be 3 plus 600 or 603. So again, I'm kind of getting ahead of myself, but I just want you to see the relationship between a recurrence relation and some closed form equation like this. So let's look at the second part of this. This is saying, hey, use that same recurrence relation that I gave you with the different initial condition this time of negative 7. So again, I'm still saying a1, a2, a3 would be a0 plus 6, a1 plus 6, a2 plus 6. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's right. I think I was confusing myself for a minute. But in this case, a0 is negative 7. So negative 7 plus 6 is negative 1. So a1 is negative 1 plus 6 is 5. And then a1 is 5 plus 6 is 11. So I still have this common difference of 6. So if I wanted to, I could write this in the same format, but instead of 3, 3 is replaced by negative 7, but it still has the 6n. Let's take a look now at a very famous sequence that I'm sure that you've heard of, which is the Fibonacci sequence. And you probably know that a Fibonacci sequence, the next number is found by adding the two numbers before. So 0, 1 added together gives me 0 plus 1, which is 1. That's where I, this number came from. And then 1 plus 1 added together gives me 2. And then 1 plus 2 added together gives me 3. And then 2 plus 3 added together gives me 5. So you knew all about recurrence relations even before you knew what you knew. But that's what a Fibonacci sequence is all about. So if we want to ex express this as a recurrence relation, all we would have to do is again include the two parts, which is the equation and the initial conditions. And in this case, there are two initial conditions because again, you have to add the two values before it. So the first value would be zero and the next would be one because those are the first two terms in our sequence. And then the function would just say, take the value before it plus the value before that. And that's how we could write this as a recurrence relation. And again, what else do we have to do for this guy, for the equation? We have to say for n is greater than or equal to 2. So as we've talked about before, recurrence relations certainly have their place, but they don't have a place if, say, I wanted you to find a 100, the 100th term of a sequence. Then this would be a real pain in the butt because a recurrence relation would require me to find all of the terms before that 100th term 
and that's a lot of math that I would have to do. So what we'd like to do is to find a non-recursive formula, an explicit formula, or a closed formula. And we've worked on that a little bit when we talked about arithmetic sequences and geometric sequences and how to write those in that way. Um, but quite often it's not an arithmetic sequence or it's not a geometric sequence. So then we have to find some other way. And one method for doing that is called iteration and it involves substitution. Let's take a look at our first iteration example together. Now before we do this iteration example as an iteration problem, I do want to point out to you that you can skip all of that work if you're very intelligent and recognize just based on the recurrence relation that what I'm dealing with here is in fact an arithmetic sequence because we've already learned about arithmetic sequences and we said if you have an arithmetic sequence you can write that as the initial value plus the common difference times n. So if I can recognize that without having to do all of this work, then yay for us, let's do it. But let's just say that I'm still intelligent, but I just didn't recognize this as an arithmetic sequence. So how am I going to go about discovering how to write this function? Here's how we do it. You start with your initial condition, two. You use this recursive relation that says, take the term before it, two, and add three. And notice, I don't have to put equals five because I don't care. I'm not looking for the solutions, I'm looking for the pattern. To find the next one, I'm taking a sub one, which we just said was two plus three, and I'm adding three to that. Now, I'm going to simplify that and say that's the same as two plus two threes. And then I'm going to take my two plus three plus three, and I'm going to add three to that. And I'm going to simplify that and say, this is two plus three threes. And again, I could do this for as many times as I needed to. This would be two plus four threes. And we can see what's really happening is I'm taking two plus N number of threes, which I'm going to write as 3n. And hey, look at us. We just arrived at the same equation that we came up with knowing that it was an arithmetic sequence. But again, this is how you use iteration is you just write it out. You don't find the solutions, but you just write it out so that you can start to discover what that pattern is. Now we're going to look at the exact same question and we're still going to use iteration. I'm just going to show you a different way to use iteration. So on the last one, we sort of went bottom up. So we started with two, and then we used the equation to add three and add three and add three, and then find a pattern that way. In this method, still iteration, I'm going to show you how to go top down. So I'm gonna start with this equation. And then what I'm doing is saying, okay, well, if a sub n is found by taking a sub n minus one plus three, let's rewrite a sub n minus one. Using this equation, a sub n minus one is a sub n minus two plus three, and then I'm just going to carry down the three. Now if I rewrite that, I just have two threes. And then if I take a sub n minus two, I could rewrite that as a sub n minus three plus three, and then I still have the plus three and the plus three. And so again, if I rewrite that, and if I continue this pattern, I can see that these, um, this value matches each time. So if I continue this pattern, I could say a sub n minus n plus n times three would make sense because I'm taking these two numbers are the same. Now, why would I do a sub n minus n? Well, because guess what that is? a sub zero plus three n. Now, what did we say was our answer before? We said a sub n was equal to the initial value plus three n. And my initial value is two. So I have now just rediscovered in a third way that my equation is two plus 
3n. Up next, we're going to take a look at summations and sigma notation.